bilang isang bagong miyembro ng hukbong katihan ng Pilipinas, ikaw ay isa ng profesional na sundalo. Bilang isang profesional na sundalo, ikaw ay kabilang na sa Philippine Army na tinutularan ng buong bayan dahil sa ating disiplina. Mahalin mo ang Philippine Army, mahalin mo ang kapwa mo Pilipino, mahalin mo ang iyong bayan, ipakita ang tapat na paglilingkod dito dahil ikaw ay isang profesional na sundalo. Good day ladies and gentlemen. I am First Lieutenant Jacinta D. Versosa, AGS Philippine Army. I am presently assigned with Office of the Ethical Standard and Public Accountability Philippine Army and designated as the Chief of Admin Brands and Chief of Public Accountability and Statement of Assets and Liabilities Branch. The Code of Ethics is a substantive but concise digest of all legal, moral, and ethical values, principles, rules, and laws relevant to the accomplishment of the mission of the armed forces of the Philippines as mandated by the Constitution. As shown is the scope of my presentation. The OSP Philippine Army was activated on 01 October 1991. This is based on staff memo number 3 dated 03 September 1991. It was patterned after the existing OSPA AFP which was activated on 01 January 1990. Then on 29 October 1992, OSPA Philippine Army was organized as a personal staff of CGPA. The mission of OSPA Philippine Army to enhance professionalism to promote honesty and integrity in the military service, and to instill ethical standards and inculcate a strong sense of public accountability among military personnel in the pursuit of a common commitment against graft and corruption in the Philippine Army. So, this is the organization of OSPA. At the top is the chief of ethical standard headed by vice chief AFP then next in line is the deputy chief that office is further divided into five divisions the admin division intelligence and investigation division legal division public accountability and sal division and professionalism and graph prevention division however at HPA Instead of dividing its office into division, it is divided into branch. This is the definition of the Code of Ethics. It is a systematic collection or digest of all moral, ethical, and legal principles and rules with which members of an institution, community, or profession freely and publicly bind themselves in order to achieve their common role, duty, or purpose to the society. The Code of Ethics cannot be implemented without its basis, of course. There are two bases, the legal force and the moral force. Under the legal force, we have the Philippine Constitution, which is the highest law of the land, the Articles of War, which is found under Commonwealth Act 408, also known as the Manual of Court Martial, the Revised Penal Code, Republic Act 6713, also known as the Code of Ethical Standard for all public officials and employees of the government, and Republic Act 3019, also known as the anti grab and Corrupt Practices Act. Of course, if there are legal basis for the implementation of the Code of Ethics, there is also other basis such as the moral force, which we can find under it is the divine laws out of office, AAP custom and traditions, and AAP code of conduct. The Bible is the source of the divine laws, wherein all the good things that God has instructed to mankind to do or follow from the time of the creation of the earth and the universe, including the creation of the first parent. I think all the laws that were made effective on earth was patterned on what was to be found in the Bible. 
Example is the crime of murder. In the Ten Commandments of God that they were given to Moses, there is the instruction for men not to kill. If men will love God above all and will love his fellow men, commission of sins or offenses can be avoided. Out of office, all of us before we are called to active duty, we are required to take out of office. We are required to serve with utmost fidelity and trust. We are public servants that we should think less of our personal lives and must give priority in the accomplishment of our respective mission. The Code of Ethics was created for the purpose of shaping our ideals and aspirations into a definite course of conduct by which we can live and govern ourselves as professionals. This only means that as members of a unique organization, we should have one mind and one spirit in the accomplishment of our respective tasks, that is, to perform our job with highest degree of excellence, proper for us to be called as professionals. The conduct that we should exhibit is the conduct that is being demanded by the policy, rules and regulations, and laws relative to it. Another is the Code of Ethics was created to remind us of the delicate and critical role the AFP plays in the Filipino society. And what is this role? The AFP is the protector of the people. We are the defender of the peace and security of the people and the country. We are not here to kill, except of course in the course of legitimate operation being done by the army in the field. Another is to establish the ethical norms and conduct which measures us in the performance as soldiers. Likewise, to establish a plumb line as we lay the foundation of professionalism. The contents of the Code of Ethics are the following. We have the preamble. Article 1 speaks of identity. Article 2 speaks of AAP history. Article 3, AAP creed. Article 4, AAP membership. Article 5, military professionalism. Article 6, AAP Custom and Traditions. Article 7, stated here the general provisions. The preamble provides the reason for promulgating the code and it states the identity, vision, mission, and commitment of the AAP. The people who makes the code of ethics acknowledge first and foremost the help coming from the Almighty God. They believe that God's enlightenment is necessary to achieve and maintain a professional organization worthy of public trust and respect, faithful to its constitutional mandate as the protector of the people, the sovereignty of the state, the democratic institution, and the integrity of national territory. Article 1 speaks of the identity of the AFP. The Armed Forces of the Philippines has a unique identity. As mandated by the Constitution, we are tasked to do a specific role, being the protector of the people and country. But at present, especially the military personnel in Engineer Brigade are not only maintaining peace in their area of responsibility, but they are also tasked to do infrastructure projects, which is in a way helping the government in nation building. This program aims to transform conflict-affected communities into peace and development areas. This program includes school buildings, water system, medical facilities, farm-to-market roads, electricity, and livelihood projects. It is indeed that the AFP is performing well in its mandated role. That is why there are numerous destabilization plots to overthrow or destabilize the existing government. But this does not succeed because of the strong solidarity and firmness of the AFP to keep the government running peacefully and stable. Maybe because of the lesson in the past that the AFP was used by other people to advance their political interests for them to come into power. 
And now, the EAP is avoiding this situation and they don't want to let it happen again. There is really a need for AAP to have its identity. Because of our uniqueness, the AAP is considered as the arm of the government with respect to maintenance of peace and stability. Without the government, there is no armed forces. The AAP is the extension of the government and therefore, the AAP must do everything to keep its existence. We are now on Article 2 on AAP history. Freedom, justice, and sovereignty tells of the origin and the past of the armed forces of the Philippines and the lesson that we have learned by the AAP from its past errors and successes. So tracing one's roots is important to one's affirmation of identity. It is from our history where we can draw our aspiration from the struggles of our forefathers who fought and died for. The AAP as the embodiment of the cherished martial values and traditions of the Filipino people traces its roots to certain historical events. So just to recall, we have the Battle of Mactan on 27 April 1521, the Dagui Revolt in 1744, where we can see the Muslim resistance and other similar uprising against Spanish colonialism and manifesting their fight against foreign domination. On 07 July 1892, Andres Bonifacio founded the Katipunan. He is the father of the Philippine Army, who exemplified Filipino solidarity. Then on 22 March 1897, the Tejeros Convention proclaimed officially our desire for complete independence and thereafter gave birth to the Philippine Army. Then on June 12, 1898, is the Declaration of Philippine Independence at Kawit Cavite by General Emilio Aguinaldo. And for the first time, the Philippine flag was unfurled and our national hymn was played. On 25 October 1898, the Philippine Military Academy was organized and followed by the organization of the Philippine Constabulary on 08 August 1901. On 21 December 1935, the National Defense was enacted and the AFP was officially created. The defense of Bataan and Corregidor from the outbreak of World War II against the Japanese invasion forces, the active Philippine guerrilla movement, and the successful anti hu campaign also best exemplified the Filipino soldiers' heroism and love of country. As part of AAP history, the AAP is taking its active participation in international peacekeeping efforts as its commitment to the United Nations. Article 3, the AAP quid and stand on the basic issues. It is conceptual synthesis of what the AAP believes in, stands, and fights for. It is, in essence, the AAP's fighting cause and ideology. The AAP core values are honor, loyalty, valor, duty, and solidarity. As defined, honor is the crowning value as it is more precious than life itself. It is the hallmark of our military conduct, which implies our clear consciousness of personal dignity and self-worth. Our conscience will dictate us if we are living an honorable life. We may look physically beautiful, clean and tidy in wearing our uniform, but as we examine ourselves, we will find that we are living in a very immoral life. It's not the outward look that counts, but our being as a person inside and out. There should be nothing to hide. There is nothing questionable about us. Loyalty. Loyalty means that as we take our oath of office, we are bound to be loyal to our nation, to support and defend the constitution, support the chain of command, and obey the lawful orders of persons superior to us in the office. This value enhances the dedication and pride in our units. It will foster cohesion and promote the well-being of our fellow soldiers. Valor. Valor not only means physical strength, courage, and ability to overcome fear. 
in order to carry out mission. But it also includes the moral courage to stand for what is right. If you are wrong, admit that you are wrong. And don't let this pass to others in order to avoid liability or blame. Always speak the truth. Do not be afraid. Duty. Duty means the value of obedience and discipline performance despite difficulty and danger. It is a personal act of responsibility manifested by accomplishing all assigned tasks to the fullest of one's ability. So what does it mean? We should think that 